Thank you, Father. Whilst you are still standing, the book of Psalms, chapter 32, verse 8, is the scripture we are following in the issue of divine guidance. Divine guidance. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. Have a mic with you, Mama. I will guide you with my eye. So I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will guide you with my eye. Father, thank you for your word. Speak to us now. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I thought I saw Windrose, Pastor Windrose Shafari, but God bless you. Let's clap hands for him. He's in the service today. I want to believe that you and your wife are now here. Is that correct? All right. I'm not forcing you here. Okay. All right. Let's clap hands for them once again. These are business people. And we want to thank God for the university which is here. God bless you, Anango. We welcome you. We welcome you. We love you. More than any other time, the issue of divine guidance is so important. Because a lot is happening now. And as we are traveling in the month of the word, I want you to re realize the times that we are living in. And that we need the guidance of God. Guidance of the Holy Spirit. I want to thank all the speakers that have spoken. Even today, God bless you. Powerful word from you. And from the Lord. And today, we want to continue from last two weeks. Um, in fact, the last week. When we are following the issue of how does God lead us? Because if you don't know how God leads you, you end up making a lot of mistakes in life. So we looked at ways God leads us. After we had traveled with the principles of divine guidance. I shan't go into that. You can go on the YouTube and you'll get all that. But today we said, we, we, we started to talk about the ninth way God leads us. Which God can use to lead you. And that's through prophecy. We stressed last week that when God comes and speaks through prophecy, or rightly said through a prophet, it is divinely inspired words from God that then passes through a human being. And it reveals the mind of God to you. And saves, exhort, and comfort you. It, it should not do anything else. She has to comfort you. It will have to edify you. And then it also exalts you. If it comes to discourage you, it's not God speaking. It's not God speaking. And I want to stress today that when we talk about prophets, the prophecy is 
accurate. Ci profita acirele nema. Because it's coming from God. No tiri mwari. But the vessel is not perfect. The spirit is perfect. But men are not. That's why I always say prophets must stay clean. So that the mind of God when it comes, it's transmitted as it is to the people. It's not diluted. And it's only these days where we see some prophets committed adultery on Saturday and on Sunday prophesy. And then we say then we start to see that there is a counterfeit of prophecy. And that's divination. So we are analyzing the difference between divination and prophecy as we study prophecy. And like I said yes, uh, yes uh, Sunday that they are similar. Very close. If you don't have the spirit of God you will believe divination as prophet. So we are starting to analyze and last week I said prophecy raises faith while divination raises fear. And I will not dwell on that because I spoke about the last week. And the verse is 1 Corinthians 14 verse 3. So it's simple. I saw the prophet. He spoke. Did it leave me with fear? Or with joy? Or uplifted? Simple. Number two, we say prophecy steers up an atmosphere of peace. Unity, forgiveness, love. Whereas divination brings division, unforgiveness, hatred. So we saw the prophet. But after he's gone, is the family united? Or there are accusations and counter accusations? Simple. And I also want to stress there what I always say as you wake up in the morning there are two worlds who want to speak to you. The world of the devil and the world of God. And they can do that through either divination from the devil's side or prophecy from God's side. And prophecy can actually be this word, the word of God. But here we are zeroing in on the prophet who is carrying the word. So, as you wake up in the morning and you, you, are, you have not said anything, two worlds are anxious what you are about to say. And so we got to be very careful because even as we walk in town, these worlds come to you. You can be stopped in the streets by anybody and say, I'm seeing this on you. And you have to know how to respond to that as a child of God. Because you are taught. Even here in church, not all of us are Mature in the things of God. The world of the devil can speak through someone here. Even as we pray for people. Because this is the month of doing that. That the world of the devil can speak through anybody. Even at a funeral. 
A small boy can read on the floor and start to speak deep things. This family is going to perish if you don't do one, two, and three. I want the child of God to silence these voices. Stand up at the funeral, my daughter. Stand up at the funeral, my son. And say, shut up! Nobody is going to die in this family. No, nobody is going to die in the name of Jesus. Because somebody has to cancel those words in the spirit realm. One person has to cancel those words in the family. If you are all quiet, it's received. And it will start to work. Words are powerful. And surely somebody will die in the family. But a child of God who is taught must say no. Nobody is going to die in this family. We speak life. And even here at World of Love, we speak life. We speak long life. We speak long life. Hallelujah. The Bible says the men, men have been given about 70 years to live. But by God's grace, we go to 90 and above. So you got to speak right now. Open your mouth and say, I receive 90 and above. That's powerful. You shall not die. That's why we silence demons here. If a demon speaks, we don't give it a mic. How can you give a mic to divination? You divide the family. You divide the church. So we don't give mic to demons. This is for the preaching of the gospel, not for demons. We are not under excitement even in manifestations of demons. No. They must live. In Mark chapter 1, the Bible says Jesus Christ cast out devils. And he forbade them to speak. Are you hearing me somebody? Number 3 today. Number 3. Prophecy, if it is in the realm of foretelling, if it is in the realm of foretelling, should come to pass. If prophecy is in the realm of foretelling, it should come to pass. Divination leans on instilled fear to accomplish futuristic intended goals. Otherwise, the devil cannot see the future. No, 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 no. The devil cannot see the future. Deuteronomy chapter 18 from verse 21 to 22. Deuteronomy chapter 18, 21 to 22 says, And if you say in your heart, how shall we know the word which the Lord has not spoken? How shall we know the word which the Lord has not spoken? When a prophet speaks in the name of the Lord, if the thing does not happen or come to pass, that is the thing which the Lord has not spoken. The prophet has spoken presumptuously. You shall not fear him. Now, get a detail here. The Bible is still saying the prophet. Are you hearing me? It's not saying false prophet. It's saying the prophet has spoken presumptuously. So I don't counsel young prophets around in the country as a father. 
and Kanzure as a father I don't say that word bah no I would rather teach because I know the spirit is perfect but the vessel is imperfect so as fathers in the nation we are careful not to destroy the young prophets I would rather sit down with the young man and correct because Papa, you spoke out of excitement. But you are still a prophet. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So we nurture young people. But the Bible says, don't be afraid of what he has said. Now I want you also to know a detail here. If a prophecy is given without conditions, it must come to pass as it is. Are you hearing me? If it is given without conditions, it must come to pass. If it doesn't come to pass, that did not come from God. But if it's given with conditions, Mama, you are going to be a magnet business person. If you stay loyal to God's commandments, now we are two. The prophet and you. You must abide by the conditions for the prophecy to come to pass. You must also sing it. You must believe it. The Bible says, believe the prophets. Then it will happen. But if it is not with conditions, it has to come to pass. It has to come to pass. It's independent of whether you are there or you are not there. It's God saying, I will do it. The other time, the prophet stood up and says, there's going to be hunger in Jerusalem. That had nothing to do with your belief or what? No. It's God speaking. I think I've given that here sometimes. That there's going to be a shaking in the nation. And it happened in 2017. And then I said, another one is coming. I'm not consulting you for that. It's God speaking. It's, it says no conditions. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So when a prophet speaks, it has no conditions, it must come to pass. Then that's a true man of God. But what does divination do? Divination leans on instilling of fear so that you believe and then it happens. Did you hear me? Divination says, I see a pit before you. Then when you are afraid, you have believed. And then when it happens, it does not necessarily mean that it was from God. You were afraid. That's why you must silence voices that instill fear in your life and in the family. You must say no. Somebody comes and he says, very soon they'll be crying in this family. Okay, let me give you an example of my wife. My wife used to dream before, before she was totally delivered. She would dream graves. 
graves, if it is a grave of a Christian, it, it will be having what flowers on top. Then she would wake up and say, a Christian is going to die. If it is not a Christian, there will not be flowers on the grave. To you and me, that looks very attractive. Oh, she will make money. I don't mind. Oh. I, I kept on listening to what she was saying. And inside of me, I was troubled. Because she would wake up in the morning and say, ah, there's going to be a death. And surely it would come. <laughs> surely it would come. She was like that. Until I said, ah, mama, no. Does God want people to die in the family like that? Ah. So what we are doing now, each time you dream that, let's reverse it. You must be number one to reverse it. Your mouth must speak and say, no. Nobody's going to die. And I refuse divination. Don't say I'm refusing prophecy. Don't worry, don't worry. God will still come back if it is God. But if you are not understanding some of these dreams, say, ah, ah. No. I refuse this in the name of Jesus Christ. Those ramba, Mr. Rajas. And from that time, she stopped it. Up to today. I'm so happy. Are you getting something? Are you getting something? So we are very careful because we can't simply take a fulfillment of a prophecy to mean that it's God. No. How did it come? Was it threatening? Was it instilling fear? We were not given a spirit of fear, but what? Sound mind. And so we refuse fear as it is because it is not from God. So don't be woodwinged by accuracy of future things, prophecy. How did it come? First Samuel chapter 6 from verse 1. The Bible says, and the ark of the Lord was in the country of the Philistines seven months. And the Philistines called for the priests and diviners. Look at that. You remember the ark of God was in the land of Philistine for about seven years. It was captured. And a lot of things started to happen in Philistine. You know the story. Their gods fell, Dagon fell. A lot of things happened. <laughs> Dagon fell. And a lot of things started to happen. So they said, ah, let's take back this, 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 this ark back to its land. And then that's where we are reading now. First Samuel chapter 6 from verse 1. And the ark of the Lord was in the country of the Philistines seven months. Um, interpret that, Mama. And the Philistines called for the priests and diviners, saying, what shall we do to the ark of the Lord? We are talking about the ark of the Lord. And diviners are also now prophesying or divining um, uh, about the ark of God. Tell us where we shall we send it? And they said, 
These are the diviners speaking now. If you send away the ark of God of Israel, send it not empty. But in any wise return him a trespass offering, then he shall be healed. And it shall be known to you why his hands is not removed from you. So these are diviners speaking their truth. Are you hearing me, somebody? These are diviners speaking the truth. If you send the ark of God with empty, then this, what has befallen us, will never leave us. So send it with a trespass offering. Have you ever heard people say, I went to this witch doctor. And the witch doctor said, I cannot help you. Because what is on you is too big. You better go to church. Have you ever heard of that? Have you ever heard of that? What does that do to you? You will continue going to them. Because he sees. These people are speaking the right thing concerning the ark of God. Where did they get it? They got it from the practices in Israel. That each time they sinned, they would put up a sin offering, a trespass offering. And things would come down. So they said, let's do the same. It's a complicated world. So, the mere fact that it finally happened and there was an accident which the diviner spoke about does not necessarily mean that it is from God. You got to know how it came. I stress that. How did it come? Did it instill fear? What really happened? Number four. I'll give you two today. And I'm done. Four. Number four. The spirit of divination drives diviners to use tangible items for greater results. The spirit of divination drives diviners to use tangible items for greater results. Not so with the spirit of prophecy. No. Deuteronomy 4, verse 15. So what, what are we saying here? Get this one. The last one for today. We have three more to go until we get to seven. When you visit a true prophet, you don't receive anything tangible from them. You don't receive water. You don't receive stones. You don't receive anything. You don't receive a red cloth. You receive the word of God. Are you hearing me, somebody? You receive the word of God. Nothing tangible. Deuteronomy 4, verse 15. Up to 19. The Bible says, God is speaking. To the children of Israel and hence to you. Take careful heed to yourselves. For you saw no form when the Lord spoke to you at all. Out of the midst of fire. Lest you act corruptly and make for yourselves a carved image in the form of any figure. 
the likeness of male or female, the likeness of any animal that is on the earth, or the likeness of any winged bird, the likeness of anything that creeps on the ground. What is God saying? Don't ever put your mind on anything that was created. A bird, animals, no, don't do that. You named these things in Adam. You cannot worship them. You actually gave them names. And take it, lest you lift your eyes to heaven. And when you see the sun, the moon and the stars all the hosts of heaven you feel driven to worship them and serve them which the Lord your God has given to all the peoples under the whole heaven as a heritage <laughs> all these we are given to enjoy but not to worship them all these things the heavenly array the stars, the moon we are given by God for free the animals, the birds the fish of the sea we are given to eat don't ever put it there to worship so what does diviners do? Diviners will always make sure that when you leave their shrine, you must live, you must live with something which your eyes will be fixed on. And you actually believe that without it, you cannot live. And thereby you put God aside. Why does he want us to fix his, our eyes on him and not on things? Our faith will go to these things. And we remove our eyes from God. So I say to you, Banam, it doesn't matter how powerful somebody is. If they prescribe something, go with this home. The Bible is saying this is where demons will then live. All your troubles up to today are because of the things you received and you believed and you put God aside. We just come here as a family, we sing the way we were sing. We give to God. We pray to God. We hear the word. We go home. Nothing more. We pray for the sick. We cast out devils. All in the Bible. Nothing more. I will never give you something. And say. Never leave this. Put it around your neck. Put it around your waist. We will never say that. Because demons watch a pattern. Are you used to that cloth? Demons come there. So we worship God very simple. And I want you to be like that. No complications. If a business is not, is not uh, prospering, we pray to God. Simple. Nothing to put in your desk at work. Nothing. promote office at
simple life. Demon free. <laughs> Demon free. The Lord has been so gracious to me. Demon free. I sleep when I sleep, I sleep. And then there are nights when there are visitations from God. Amazing visitations. I, somebody just wakes me up. And I see a bright man seated by. That's my life. That's how God has led me all this way. And I'm shocked I sit down. That's, that has been my life. And the other time I was worried because it, these were lions fighting. And I said, Lord, God said, no, it's not. Why? And Satan. It's a clean house. Even cleaners can go and clean everywhere. I got myself real Everywhere they can go in, they will find nothing. Because we don't want anything that's hooked up with hell. Because these items are known in hell. Registered in hell. Don't touch, touch things. Live a simple Christian life. Ezekiel 21, just look, 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 listen to this. 21. Ezekiel 21, 21 to 22. The Bible says, for the king of Babylon stood at the parting of the way. Africa is just from Africa. Oh, your king of Babylon stood at the parting of the way at the head of two ways to use divination. Now this one was open, not prophets, divination. He made his arrows bright. He consulted with images. He looked in the river. At his right hand was the Liver, sorry, liver. At his right hand was the divination of Jerusalem. To appoint captains to open the mouth in the slaughter. To lift up the voice with shouting. To appoint battering rams against the gates. To cast a mound and build a fort. Three kinds of divination. Three kinds. By arrows, consulting with images. What are images? Household idols. And by examining the entrails of animals. Was done in Egypt. 
It was very common in Egypt. So, our story is very simple. We worship God in spirit and in truth. We don't touch things. Now, do I say that God does not make you do something funny? We have seen it in the word of God. We saw Jesus take the mud and he put it on the eyes of the blind man and said you must go and wash in the pool of Siloam. And the blind man saw. We don't deny that. What we deny is a repetition of the same thing which we did not see in Jesus until demolish a pattern and they come into that thing. That's what we say no. Why? Because if it's repeated, your faith will go on the thing, not on God. And in our Melanam, would you remember Zamara not here and Gurove in a Ojvato Ponaipa? We had a man by the name Will Smith Wilkosweth. Smith Wilkosweth would say to a sick to, to a sick child, bring that child, bring that child on stage. And their stages were too big, too, too tall. Then he would put the child there and kick the child. And the child drops there and coughs. The child is alive. I don't deny that. Are you hearing me, somebody? I could have put a piece, a piece. See, come down, down, and down, and get under the car. Could you end up with a papa and a mari? Could I end up by? Don't panic, don't be scared. I could have put it. Mumba magu pachi kona. Panu jinu shaku iwe. Just inga fanu kona kona muzmai. Jiruko gara mumusha makore na makore. Kutenda kwa kwa kunga mbufi kwa kainda kuna mwari kunyepa. Kuna gara. Kashinish. Those that not I want no. The enemy wants repetition. I think it was Ben Hinn was told by a, a servant of the Lord. I don't know, it must have been Kenneth Hagen that Kobachiracho Karirega Vanava Porere because Angar Moshan is a batch every service. I can't deny it. Yes, so I'm shorter. Can I see a batch? I'm shorter. The bagger gets a yeah, but she may go on up a sang and a batch, right over the run. Eh, we're going to go over. No, Zara name, ma'am, is a zip there of a goop. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Our God is a good God, our God is simple God, but He is also a God of war. The Marie Ondo. Against your enemies. Amen. Wabaziriga. Wabaziriga. So we worship him simple. We don't complicate things. We have our FF family fellowship. We go to sleep. Simple. So Speaking from last week, I want you to be very careful, children of God. We are living in perilous times. Don't open a whole generation to demonic oppression. 
things that they, they end up saying, where did this come from? And now today you try to do business it is things that were started by great grandfathers and they are now in your life and you are struggling and you open open doors because you are a human being sometimes you open doors and that case the blood becomes strong <laughs> that case the blood becomes strong the blood of sugar diabetes becomes strong. The blood of poverty becomes strong. Then one Sunday you're in church, you cry. You repent before God. That blood becomes weak. If you continued like that, coming to church, it would remain weak. But the other week, you are a yo-yo. You go down again. So we go round and round. Yeah. I'm not going back. Then, we know it's a week. Week, week, week. Until we are going to the next one. We are going to the next one. The Lord has given you a child. Pana mama na watay na matira. Azo zoka akata babanda kata mistake na kambi na kunga anga jimbo na uti pangu shinda itengera. Unani pesa sipa bwos nenda kuto taku tanga foot. Vana mangu madimo na anetse kuwa na se kuwa visa. Ha? Tuna da. Because I have no pin up a good. The curare, kutuwaenge. Saka kuku kono vinzaiwe we kutaka shata. Dopa niya. Kuku kono vinzawa na Israel good. Egypt ya ina kunaka. Iyo watichika garik. Ne marikis. Dopa niya. Niya kuti Jesus ane simba. Nesta la Jesus iba. Ai siya. Jesu ane simba. Asi. Kukukonvinza iwewe. Kuti idamari. Ndopa niya. Ndosa kati uyaku service. U service. Kuto service wa. Kuto chiji wa oil. Nema plugs. Ndopa pa mga meno pa mga mga pa. Kushika pana pa mga otro. Kata 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 kata. Ma plugs anga per. Ne five days jet. Vamos não tô puxa, cupim da mulher de parar, Pedro e a Pira, só que tu não tô serviça, and I thank God you are service today, the Lord has service you today, your story should never die, you are a child of God, you are now wise at this month with the word of God. Oh, the month of the word, you are now wiser. You have got feet like a deer. You are now wiser. Give yourself a pump-up. Oh, glory be to Jesus. Just raise up your hands. Our service is over. Eta, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and fellowship of the Holy Spirit, Peace that surpasses understanding. Be with me now and forevermore. I shall not die. I will live to declare the words of the Lord. Goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever.